So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to find the line of best fit and then making the predictions that you see listed here down at the bottom. So the calculator to find the line of best fit, the first thing we want to do is we want to hit stat, and I already edited it, but stat, edit, enter, and you input all the independent variable values in the first column, the L1 column, and all the dependent variable values in the second column. So just keep in mind, the independent variable here, we use the x to represent that, and it represents the height in inches of seven random high school boys. And then the corresponding weights of those boys. So the y that depends on the x is listed in the second column. Now, if we want to calculate the line of best fit, we hit stat, right arrow for calc, calculate, and we want to Calculate this one here, the lin reg AX plus B. That's the one we're most familiar with. Y equals MX plus B. Here it's an A, not an M. But it still represents the slope or the rate of change. We hit enter, and then we want to scroll down here, and we want to store the, the equation in Y1. And now, again, all this is listed in the line of best fit notes. Storing it in Y1 means we have to hit VARS, Y variables, function mode, Y1, and if you need to replay that, go ahead and do that. But you need to get Y1 right there. We're storing it there, and we could hit down arrow and enter, or we could just hit enter and enter. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and write this number in there, and you go ahead and write it as well. So when I round it to the nearest three digits after the decimal, I've got what we see here, Y, which is the weight of the, uh, of the students, is equal to 3.12 times x, which is the height, minus 62.082. Now, whenever you're calculating a line of best fit or a trend line, sometimes the further you get away from the data given, the more unusual the, the, the results would be. So a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, what does y mean? y is the weight. Okay, so every time you calculate y, you're calculating the weight. What is x? So x is the height. So the weight depends on the height. If you calculate y, you get the, you get the weight. If you calculate x, well, if you find x, you found the height. And so the next part of the problem, I can leave that on. Well, I guess I could do that. So the next one says, use your line of best fit to predict the weight of a boy who is 6'10". So the weight, again, that's the y, and the boy who is 6'10", well, that's the height. That's the x. But if you, if you look up at the chart, you notice that the height is in inches. That's in inches, and this is in pounds. Well, we have to convert 6 feet 10 inches to, to inches, and 6 feet is 72 inches, plus 10 more inches is 82. So that's 82 inches. And so... If we're given the x of 82, then what's the weight? Well, all we have to do is calculate, to calculate that is go to vars, y variables, function mode, y1, 82. So y1 of 82 is 193.747 pounds. Let's call it 0.75 pounds. So therefore, y of 82 is about 190. 3.75 pounds. So that's how we calculate an x, sorry, that's how we calculate a y, the, the weight given the x of, uh, it, which is the height, 82 inches. So that's that one. And uh, we can go ahead and put a box around that. That's our answer. Make sure you're showing your work in here as well. You've got to show how you found that number. You can't just, you can't just magically have that number appear. Then the next one is, use the line of best fit to predict the height of the boy. So remember, the height, the height is, the, is the x of the boy who is 125 pounds. So now we're given the y, and we're asked to find the x. Well, that's when we did this. We're given the, uh, we're given the, the weight and of 125, and we're asked to find the, the x. And so what we're supposed to do here is we're supposed to graph. And when we graph that, we don't see anything. So we want to make sure that 125 is on there in the y. And notice that our y min is 129. 
and we, we need that to be lower than the 125. We need the Y max to be above it, so let's make that 150. And then uh, let's, let's let our X min be zero and our X max be 125, just, just to uh, uh, X max. That's probably a good window. Let's just see what happens here. All right, it shows that the two lines cross, the two, the two functions intersect. And if we want to find the x coordinate at that point of intersection, which is the x I'm looking for, I know the y coordinate is 125. I want to calculate 5 for intersect. I can scroll down and hit 5, I hit enter, or I can type 5 from the beginning and it'll give this. Uh, this screen here, it's first curve. Well, the first curve is the y1, that's the blue curve, enter. Second curve is the y2, that's the, the constant of 125, enter. And then moving the cursor anywhere near or just anywhere on the screen anyway, uh, will give us our guess. And our guess says that if the, if the boy weighs 125 pounds, it's likely that the boy is about 60 inches tall or just about just a little under five feet tall. So 125 is about average for a boy who is about five feet tall. So we'll put 59.96 inches. So, um, we would say though that 125 equals 3.12x minus 62.082 when x is about 59. Point, what did I say? 96 inches. So therefore, just under five feet tall. It would be a, a very important thing for you to make sure you know how to do that.